The Valley's Glacier Lake is a popular place to recreate, and it has been a personal favorite in my family for nearly a decade now. As you may be aware, the Valley's Glacier has experienced a significant separation event. The break in the glacier is continually moving massive amounts of ice into the outflow area. This area is currently open for recreating. However, when considering things such as the type of watercraft, equipment, or trip planning, knowledgeable recreationists and season guides know that in order to safely enjoy this area, there are some things you need to know before you go. We're here today at the Valdez Glacier Lake with Caden Adler, Anadir Adventures, and Zach Sheldon, Alaska Guide Company, to talk about watercraft, safety equipment, and safety plans. Caden, what can you tell us about these three different watercraft here today? Yeah, sure, Aaron. So we've got three craft here. For examples, we've got this inflatable kayak, a fiberglass kayak, as well as a canoe here. So this inflatable kayak is great because it has some inherent flotation. All of these are separate, three separate chambers. So if one of these chambers were to become compromised out there, this thing's gonna stay afloat. It also has some open gaps in the hull of this boat that allow water to free flow through. So it's not gonna take on any water. The limiting factor with this though is going to be the load capacity and cargo capacity for gear. So we have this fiberglass boat over here, which does have a bit more cargo capacity, but it doesn't have that inherent flotation. So you will want to have some float bags in the bow and stern hatches of these boats to provide that flotation in the event of a capsize. Over here by Zach, we also have this canoe. This is a great option as you have a lot of storage capacity in these things. And with this one, you also have a front and rear uh, chambers there that'll provide that flotation as well. Uh, there's multiple different materials that these canoes are made of, but making sure you have that flotation in the event of a capsize is important. First thing I do when coming out to the lake is I'll check the weather in advance and make a plan around that. Make sure you tell someone where it is you plan to be going along the lake, how long you plan to be out, what sort of things you expect to look at or do while you're out here. Be prepared for the weather to change and check in if your plans change. Along with these plans, you also want to make sure you're prepared with the gear that you're paddling around with. One thing I like to bring if you have a boat, especially that doesn't have that flotation, is a bilge pump. This way, if you do take on any water in your vessel, you can pump that water back out. It's also not a bad idea to bring along some rope, either in a throw bag or a tow rope, in case someone needs to be pulled. This is a great thing to have along. Along with that, your most important piece of gear is going to be your PFD, your personal flotation device. And it's really important that when this is on, it's on properly. So you want it nice and snug. So snugging up those side straps, if you were to fall in the water, you want this to stay on you. Another option out there is going to be dry suits or wetsuits. That way, if you do fall in the water, you're not going to be exposing your body to those cold water temperatures. Our last thing here is gonna be our communication devices. Your cell phone's not always gonna work out here especially not around some of these steep mountain corners. So it's always good to have a backup plan. I really like these satellite messengers. That way you have constant access to the sky and can get a message out in the event of a need. As Caden and Zach just demonstrated, there are many things to consider when paddling on the Glacier Lake. It's important to know the hazards and current conditions. Know your watercraft, have a plan, and always use the proper equipment. It's vital to know before you go. 